Leaders, how to help your teams work with AI. Artificial intelligence is everywhere these days, and it's shaking up how we work, live, and even think. If you are a manager leading a team through this AI revolution, you might be grappling with a big question. How do I help my team not only understand AI, but embrace it as a tool to enhance their work and not be threatened by it? That's exactly what we're going to dive into today. First, let's tackle a fundamental concept about AI. Computers are smart, but their intelligence is fundamentally different from ours. Humans possess what we call natural intelligence, which allows us to juggle a wide variety of tasks, think flexibly, and creatively connect ideas and concepts. Computers, on the other hand, are specialists. They excel at narrow tasks. We call this artificial narrow intelligence. Now, scientists are working towards something far more ambitious, artificial general intelligence or AGI. The idea is to create computers that can think and reason as broadly as humans do by modeling how humans perceive and understand the world what's known as the world model. Here's the catch though. We don't fully understand how our own brains represent the world. If we did, we can program AGI and it'll be much simpler. Instead, researchers are experimenting with approximations, hoping to uncover the key to AGI. What we do know is how computers represent the world. And that's the foundation of today's AI. Computers rely on digital data, massive streams of information converted into numbers. These numbers live in a complex mathematical space called vector space. In reality, this representation might have thousands of dimensions, but for computers and math, 3D is the same as 1000D. So for our understanding and to make it easier, I'll use 3D for representation. In this three-dimensional space, for instance, all the pictures of cats might form a cat cluster, while the pictures of dogs might gather together in a dog cluster. This clustering helps AI system recognize patterns. So if you show an AI a picture of an animal, it can place that image in the vector space and figure out which cluster it is closest to. That's how it can identify a cat. Large language models like ChatGPT work similarly, but with words instead of images. Words are converted into vectors and stored in this or a different multidimensional space. Given a sequence of words like, hello, today is, the AI can predict the next word in the sentence by jumping to the closest vector. The key variable here is though called temperature. If the temperature is very high, the AI generates more creative outputs and jumps to vectors in a more random way. But it also risks sounding random and hallucinating. If the temperature is low, the AI sticks to very predictable and rigid outputs. So striking the right balance is critical. Now let's circle back to the human brain. It operates quite differently. While computers are strictly digital, the brain might be analog or even a mix of analog and digital. Plus, our brain has chemistry and chemicals, uses emotions, and, and feelings are also captured. We also get our input from many sensors like touch, sight, smell, taste, and sound to create the model of the world. This makes our intelligence far richer and more nuanced. This is why humans excel as creativity, context, and abstract reasoning, things that current AI struggles with. So, where does this leave us as professionals? Should we fear AI? 
not if we approach it in the right way. The key isn't to worry too much about AI taking our jobs, but to think about how we can divide our roles into tasks. If we think about our jobs as different tasks, then within that, AI can handle the repetitive and data-driven tasks, while humans can focus on areas that require empathy, intuition, and creativity. In short, we need to lean into what makes us humans. For managers, this shift requires guiding your team through change with both strategy and empathy. Here's how you can do it. First, educate your team. AI can seem like magic, but it's just really math and algorithms under the hood. Use simple analogies, like the clustering of cats and dog images, to demystify how AI works. Explain its limitations, like the fact that it lacks intuition and creativity, and highlight the roles that humans play in guiding and interpreting AI's output. Next, foster a growth mindset. Help your team see AI as a tool that amplifies their strengths rather than as a competitor. For example, AI can automate tedious tasks, leaving more time for strategic and meaningful work. It can also generate insights that employees can use to make smarter decisions. Then focus on the human AI synergy. Design workflows where AI and human complement each other. Let AI handle the pattern recognition and the data analysis while your team contextualizes the findings and makes nuanced decisions. For instance, AI might draft a report, but your employees refine it with creativity and strategic insights. Invest in upskilling. Provide training to help your team master AI tools and develop uniquely human skills like critical thinking and emotional intelligence. Staying ahead of the industry trends ensure that your team remains competitive and confident in a rapidly evolving landscape. Finally, don't overlook the emotional side. Change can be very scary and employees may fear that AI threatens their job security. Address these concerns openly and with empathy. Share success of teams that have embraced AI and thrived and reassure your teams that their roles are evolving, not disappearing. Be human. By taking these steps, you can create a workplace where AI isn't seen as an enemy, but as a powerful ally. Together, humans and AI can achieve outcomes far greater than either one could do alone. And as a manager, your most important role is to guide your team in adapting to this new reality, not just to survive, but to thrive. By the way, if you need help with this to get started, I can talk with your team to help them understand the world of AI better so they can enhance their own models of the world on this topic for both their good and the organization's good. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. For a one-page visual summary of everything we've discussed, sign up on my website. Thank you.